Okay, the clocks are at 9 o'clock, so if we could uh, now call our February 7th McLeod County Board meeting to order, we will begin with our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just a quick announcement before we begin. Uh, Commissioner Schmalz is feeling ill today, so he will not be present. So hopefully he recovers soon. Next item on our agenda will be uh, consideration of agenda items. Do we have any additions or corrections to today's agenda? No changes, Mr. Chair. Is there a motion to approve? Okay. We have a motion from Kruger, a second from Luthens to approve today's agenda. Any discussion? We'll then proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda? No changes, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion from Wright, second from Nagel to approve today's consent agenda. Is there any discussion? We'll then proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up will be Minnesota County Engineers Association. Make sure and talk close into the mic and then we'll be able to make sure it can be so. Okay. Um, good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, so my name is Brian Pogazinski. I'm the Houston County Engineers Association president. Um, I'm here today because McLeod County was selected for a special projects award. Um, this award is uh, given to projects that are exceptionally unique and rare in character and um, scope. Um, so this award is not given out every year. Um, in fact, for the past six years, the special award project has only been given out one other time. Um, so this year we recognize the completion of a project that began as a vision by the local community leaders to establish a local and regional connection within their community. This connection has been planned for decades, dating all the way back to the 1960s. Since that time, the project has been identified in various comprehensive planning documents and transportation studies. The connection re would require construction of a highway where no previous road existed throughout well over half of the corridor length. The corridor contained numerous barriers, including homes needed to be removed, a new bridge crossing would need to be constructed, a realigned intersection with US Highway 212 would need to be constructed, a new railroad crossing would need to be established, which contained the mainline track, but also a siding, and the corridor also contained a parallel high voltage transmission line, a public park, housing and redevelopment authority properties, wetlands, and a former, former city landfill. In 2005, the vision started to become a reality by the first phase that was consisted of a new bridge crossing of Buffalo Creek was constructed. The second phase was completed shortly thereafter in 2009 and, con and consist of the reconstruction of US Highway 212 intersection along with the north and south approaches. This past year, the third and final phase of the project was completed. This phase consisted of the construction of half a mile of new roadway to make the final connection with the reconstructed segment of Casa 15 Morningside Drive to the south and Casa 15 to the north. This final phase included a roundabout at the north end of the project to accommodate large turning traffic volumes from nearby middle and high school. This included new rail crossings with a relocated siding track, the only signalized pedestrian rail crossing in the city, and the permanent closure of two new nearby rail crossings. It also included the removal of two homes constructing the final trail segment, which connected two existing trail systems, and an improved expanded stormwater retention area for local flood mitigation. Project partners include the City of Glencoe, SEH, Buffalo Creek Watershed District, Twin Cities and Western Rail, MnDOT Rail Office, MnDOT State Aid, and Great River Energy. Funding for the project included MnDOT Rail Safety Funds, TCW Railroad Funds, LRIP Funds, CASA, MSAS, City, Local, and uh, County Funds. So in recognition of the many years of commitment to make this project that started off, decades ago as a lofty vision become reality. I'm honored to present the special project award to McLeod County for their CASA 15 Morningside Drive project. I just want to pass um, recognition on to those who really deserve it with this pro project. 
Um, the city of Glencoe has been pushing and for this project to go through for many years and has been a key partner. Um, SEH, um, with especially the last phase with the design work and construction had been uh, Buffalo Creek Watershed District with all of the partnership with the Buffalo Creek Crossing and stormwater mitigation. Um, Twin Cities and Western Railroad, um, helping to make sure that we can get that rail crossing through in this final stage, um, as well as the MnDOT Rail Office, MnDOT State Aid, and Great River Energy. Um, I also want to thank um, John, uh, former county engineers, John Bronkhorst and Rick Jonas. Um, this was all their vision, and uh, they were the ones that pushed this through and made it happen. So, well, uh, Take a picture with the county board with the project team. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Doug, you want to say something about this? I think uh, while everybody's coming up here, uh, uh, Commissioner Kruger in your district, this is obviously a very substantial project. Did you have any comments to add at all? Well, I think the right the right people were thanked. Thanked everyone uh, that worked to get this done. Uh, it took everyone to get it done. It was is a lot of work. I, I'm glad the association saw fit to give us a reward because after all these years, it's uh, it's going to be something to to remember. But it was a lot of if for for a commissioner, uh, it was a, quite an experience. So thanks everyone. Hey John, if you could come up, we'd want you in the picture too. This is yeah, a lot of your work. Up, John. And thanks for coming in You'll for this. Just a little bit. Doesn't have to. Doesn't. You're right. John, you're the man, Doug. Could you grab the chairs? Push over. Come 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 over. One more thing while everyone's sitting down. I, no matter which side of the fence you were on when this whole thing went down um, uh, or went together, the, the lot of people are using it. I think it's, it's, it's over, it's, I was going to say double, but probably more than that, it's expectations. And, and I hear nothing but positives, even from people that were not sure how it would work, but people are using it. So thanks again. Very good. <clears throat> It's always nice to start out our day with uh, uh, recognizing our efforts with an award. Next, we'll call on our sheriff, the sheriff's office. Good. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here today for considering approval of a federal boating safety supplemental grant through the state of Minnesota for our boat and water safety program. The grant will be used to purchase a Garmin Echo Map for $1,628, and it will replace the one on our current uh, larger boat. Okay. Questions or wishes of the board? Move to approve. I'll second. A motion from Nagel, second by Kruger, to approve the uh, purchase of the equipment using the uh, Sheriff's Office Potent Safety Water Program. Any questions? We'll then proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Health and Human Services. Ferris Board's Director. Good morning. I have three items uh, for you today. Uh, the first being consider approving the 2023 shared service agreement with the Southwestern Minnesota Adult Mental Health Consortium, also called SMOC, for two full-time equivalent regional housing specialist positions for the period of January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023, with funds from the individual and family uh, service, social services budget, excuse me, 11-430. Uh, this is a contract renewal. SMOC will reimburse McLeod County 5% above salary and benefits for the administrative cost of these two positions. Discussion or action item? 
I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Wright, second by Luthens to approve the shared services agreement with Southwestern Minnesota Adult Mental Health Consortium. Any discussion? We'll then proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B. Great. Uh, consider approving the fiscal host agreement between Southwestern Minnesota Adult Mental Health Consortium and Des Moines Valley Health and Human Services for the period of January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023. All 18 counties um, that are members of SMOC, which we are, have been asked to review and approve the fiscal host agreement. Uh, Des Moines Valley Health and Human Services will serve as the fiscal host and manage all uh, funds of SMOC and will be reimbursed 2.5% of all annual revenue on a quarterly basis. Okay. When, Mr. Chair? Yes. When you say um, of, uh, of the an annual revenues, what does that mean? I mean, what, is, what do you call annual revenues? Two, the, about $2.4 million. Okay, and that is, that's a set number that's it's the grants that come into the consortium. That's all it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll move to approve. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion from Kruger, second from Luthens to consider approving the fiscal host agreement between Southwestern Minnesota Adult Mental Health Consortium and the Des Moines Valley Health and Human Services. Any discussion? We'll then proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item C. My last item, consider approving the service agreement with Hutchinson Health to provide mental health hold order services for the period of January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023 with funds from the individual and family social services budget 11-430. This is the contract renewal. Hutchinson Health will provide mental health uh, order services as medically appropriate. These services may include confinement of persons, observation, psychiatric services, diagnostic and evaluation services, nursing services, family education and support services, group and individual therapy, medication administration, occupational and rec therapy, and other treatment services specific to the individual's um, patient treatment plan. The mental health order services will be provided at a daily rate of $1,667 for the duration of the in-person inpatient stay, excuse me. This is a 2% increase over our current contract, um, our 2022 contract. Okay, wishes of the board. I'll move to approve. I'll second. We have a motion by Nagel, second by Kruger to approve our services agreement with Hutchinson Health. Any discussion? See none will proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, uh, environmental services. Mark, are you ready? We're quite a, we're a bit ahead of schedule, so. Mr. Chair? Yes. If this was a basketball game, we're too quiet. To we're start. too quiet, yeah, I know. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, just one item this morning, it is to consider entering into an agreement with the city of Biskey for our yard waste monitoring. <laughs> Uh, that agreement is something that we currently use for all the rest of our municipalities and it pays for monitoring and, and grinding expenses up to 50 percent um, upon receipts submitted by the city back to our department so this is an agreement that we currently have in place with all of our municipalities with the exception of Biskey that does have a, a yard waste site so as you can see there that 292.30 is not to exceed number and that is based on the volume historically that they've had at that site that goes to Creekside I'll move to approve. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. We have a motion by, for Nagel, second by Commissioner Kruger, approving our yard waste agreement with the city of Biskey. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, County Attorney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, one item today, and it's to review the Rinky Noonan service proposals and consider acceptance. As you probably recall, this matter has been on a workshop and, and briefly on a prior meeting agenda, um, at which time I, I, additional information on, on how that would proceed or look in practice was requested. Um, so in reviewing the proposal, if proposal one 
the monthly retainer plus hourly services option was selected. Uh, the retainer fees would be spread across stitch systems equally. Um, those fees would be, as spelled out in the agreement, $200 per month. Any work out, performed outside the scope of that flat monthly <coughs> retainer fee would be billed to the individual dish systems upon which the work was performed. And then primary contacts to the firm, the outside firm, would be the county attorney, assistant county attorneys as assigned, and the auditor treasurer. It is contemplated that secondary contacts, including staff, would be involved when their involvement would create efficiencies, and that's where like your soil and water folks or folks that have that technical knowledge that would need to be in contact with the outside firm um, rather than having some intermediary there that would take more time. Um, we'd have those folks involved. Um, but uh, this process or practice, I think, would, would uh, help control the flow of, of issues that would go to, to the outside firm under this agreement, um, would ensure that both the county attorney and auditor treasurer who have statutorily mandated duties or responsibilities in this area um, would remain involved um, and in talking with both uh, Rinky Noonan, the attorney from there, as well as some other counties. Um, this, this is more of a procedure than what most places have in place. Um, the danger of trying to spell it out in any greater detail would be uh, there's just too many. It, it, it'd, be, it'd be hard to craft something that uh, would be ex extremely detailed um, that would still be practical. Um, but I, I think this would at least serve to address some of the concerns that were brought up at the, at the prior meeting about um, how, how we know, uh, you know what kind of issues would be going to the firm and, and when. So I'd um, be happy to answer any other questions, but that's the proposal as it stands. Um, and as far as option one or option two that are provided in that agreement that are in the packet, um, that option one, the retainer plus hourly services seems to make sense here. Mr. Chair, yep. Uh, thank you for the work on this. I know two or three weeks ago, whenever we last met, I was one of, if not the most, um, uh, concerned about how it would flow through um, the outside firm. And I think this this certainly meets my expectations, and I'm um, uh, excited to work with them. I'll stop short of a motion right now for everybody else to comment. But thank you for the efforts. Let's echo that way. Um, concerns are, have been um, met as well. So. Um, I, I mean, well, I met with uh, Ryan a little bit and, and uh, talked through some of this. I'm, I'm, as, I'm satisfied as well. It's, we're just starting. It leaves the control in, in the county hands, really. It's not a, um, I guess it's a question for Ryan. We can get out of this agreement, and either, either party can get out. We're not locked in. So. I, and I, I have high expectations for, um, uh, for more efficiency and drainage, not because any of our law or, or, or lawyers are, are not there, but the firm we hired is active in day-to-day -day drainage laws and legislations and precedences that should help us and help our uh, county attorney staff to um, to get through some of these issues. So um, I'll also stop short. I'm willing to make the motion, but go ahead, Mr. Luthens, if you have anything. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I too agree that we should have this. It's like an insurance policy to me. If we need it, we have it. If we never need it, it's good. So I would be in favor of it. Mr. Chair? Yep. I'll move uh, approval of the proposal uh, option one. I'll second it. We have a motion from Commissioner Nagel, a second from Commissioner Kruger uh, to accept the service proposal and, and uh, it's a retainer uh, with Rinky Noonan. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Finance. Colleen, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm, I have three requests today for special revenue accounts. Uh, the first one is consider adopting resolution 23 CB20, establish, establishing special revenue account 25481 for the revenue and expenditures of the opioid settlements funds. 
In 2022, final settlement agreements were reached with the pharmaceutical companies and distributors as part of the national prescription opioid litigation. As a result of this litigation, McCloud County will receive 200, over $276,000 within the next 18 years. The Minnesota Opioid State Subdivision Memorandum of Agreement was signed on January 24, 2022. Finance is requesting to establish a special revenue account opioid settlement funds 25481 to receive and distribute such funds. Is there um, parameters on how those funds can be reused? There is. It'll be used to combat addiction. So it can, it can go towards attorney fees and things like that. Right. But having it in its special account makes it easier for tracking. I would agree. Thank you. Okay, wishes of the board. I'll move to approve. Second. We have a motion, motion by Nagel, second by Luthens to consider adopting resolution 23 CB 20. Any discussion? Let we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Motion carries. Uh, the second special revenue account I'm asking for is to establish special revenue account 25091 for the revenue and expenditures of attorney forfeitures. McLeod County receives attorney forfeiture funds and the litigation passed Minnesota Statute 609.5315, Subdivision 6, which requires new reporting for forfeiture expenditures to the Office of the State Auditor. So finance is requesting to establish this fund and for receiving and distributing these funds. Okay. Wishes of the board? Move to approve. Second. That was Daryl, that was you? No, it's Doug. Doug, sorry. All right, we have a motion by Kruger, second by Nagel to approve, to adopt resolution 23 CB 21. Is there any further discussion? Let me proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item C. And the third one is consider adopting resolution 23 CB 22, establishing special revenue account. 25201 for the revenue and expenditures <clears throat> of sheriff forfeitures. And this falls under the same Minnesota statute, some division for reporting requirements to the state auditor. Okay, wishes of the board? I'll move to approve. We have a motion, is there a second? Second. Motion by Kruger, second by Luthens to consider adopting resolution 23 CB 22, establishment of a special revenue account for the sheriff's forfeitures. Any discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. I should have asked this right on the first one, but um, what have we been doing? I mean, uh, this I, I understand it. It's clarity, but I mean, in fact, I, I like it a lot uh, by these funds. We're not making, we're not creating the wheel. These have all been coming all the time. But right. We're we were not required to report on these. Yeah, and so, and I can, t I think part of this request maybe was prompted by, um, my office and when so yeah i mean we've we've done we've received forfeitures related to various you know criminal matters for for years um and there's des only designated purposes that those funds can be um spent on and so none of that is really new um what what is new is the reporting requirements that were um put into place by this recent uh statute so that's what prompted both uh the sheriff's office and the county attorney's office just to to review um, you know how we're tracking these so rather than at the end of the year um, something that takes a little bit more time to, to go back and compile that it, it's just easier to track um, so I think in the transparency and to comply with this statute moving forward um, I, I think this makes a lot of sense so the statute was was uh, changed to, yeah. cut, to, to trigger this I, I still yeah. like it but I Yes, this year would be the first year that the new reporting re requirements um, were in place. So we're complying with it this year and, and obviously well in years to come, but uh, these accounts will make that easier to track. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, we'll then proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. County administration will be begin with review of commissioner calendars. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll just go over a few things and try to expand on them today. I uh, attended a, a law library meeting. If uh, Mr. Hanch wants to jump in on this, that's fine with me too. But uh, I 
just a reminder, the law library committee is a commissioner, which is myself, the county attorney, and both judges are on that. And uh, what we discussed is uh, some improvements that need to be made um, to the law library. And I'll let Ryan, if he chooses to explain the statutory requirements on having a law library and, and why and what needs need to be met. Uh, but we have a pretty healthy balance of funds that are collected through fees, correct, Ryan, um, throughout the court system? Co correct, yes. Uh, that is in there. Um, in fact, uh, an audit of that, uh, to put it bluntly, says we probably should be spending those down, especially considering the uh, approval uh, improvements that need to be made. Improvements probably most specifically to technology um, and potentially organization or uh, staffing that uh, law library with a part-time and by part-time I mean very part-time person um, 10 hours a month maybe I mean that might even be excessive um, as we go through this so we're meeting with that trying to meet the technology needs trying to meet the um, uh, uh, comply with the audit if you will or the uh, recommendations of it with technology uh, and uh, I don't know, literature that needs to be uh, present uh, within the library. So a lot of people say, well, why do we even have it, right? You know, everybody can look up, look up anything they want online. Well, the answer is because we have to. Um, and so we've been working with that and uh, with the judges and it's been, it's been going well, but you may see, or in fact, you will see some requests come forward for some improvements there, but I think that'll be pretty, uh, easy to do considering the fund balance that we have in there and go um, going forward. Ryan, before I continue with my report, anything you want to add to that? Well, I mean, I, I mean, what you're stating is accurate. I mean, we are required by law to maintain a, a law library in the county, um, and we collect funds for that purpose. So, I mean, I think it is important to use those funds in a in a meaningful way to, to you know, to, to make sure that that law library is functional to those that use it. Um, and it really is, I mean, your lay people within the county that are, have, are, are benefiting from that more and more. Historically, uh, a law library would oftentimes be utilized by attorneys themselves and practitioners, and it still may be to a degree. Um, but the trend has been more and more that, I mean, it's your regular average citizens that are now coming in and utilizing these services, whether that's the written print materials and, and more and more so the uh, electronic, data, electronic databases that have access to both statutes, case law, and other things necessary for legal research. Um, and, and that's really where, I mean, I think some of these recommendations you've alluded to in the past couple of years, the, the law library is, um, invested in some site visits and, and getting guidance from the state law librarian or who they send out uh, to, to identify ways in which we can improve um, you know what we're offering to the public and and that's where we receive these list of a action items uh, some of which is just yes getting a computer that works in a in an inefficient and effective manner to, to access data that in subscriptions that we're paying for and fortunately, as you mentioned, we, we certainly, as the library itself, certainly has the funds to, to make those improvements. So uh, there, there's a list to work on, but I, I think there's a, a pathway to get there, uh, especially if we were able to bring somebody on to, uh, to, to help guide that. Thank you. Um, continuing with my calendar, just I'll try to make it as brief as I can. Uh, attended a meeting at the fairgrounds regarding some improvements there. and. Um, uh, which would include some infrastructure projects and possibly some building projects as we move forward. Um, uh, via Zoom or WebEx, I guess in this case, um, Barrett, what is the, the Anoka County Juvenile Justice Center? Did I get it? Okay. So that's what, if you recall, we um, entered into an agreement or contract with them late in the year regarding reserving um, a bed for any uh, juvenile um, offenders that need to be housed. So I, Barrett and I are on that um, board and that was our first meeting with that. It was educational. They're very, first blush is they're very, very good at what they do. Um, they have a campus um, with different facilities or levels of security. And I think they said up to a hundred um, different um, spots for, for the kids that uh, may need to go there. 
and they explained how things work and how the contract works and how we um, have some, not some, priority because of the contract. So I think it's um, a good investment. I think we're already, util unfortunately, we're already utilizing that investment and we um, uh, will need to continue to learn and grow with that. Um, while the, uh, the meeting over technology was nice because it is a um, heck of a drive there, I think there's um, some discussion and if anybody else is interested, we'll throw it out there to, uh, to visit the site so that we have a good um, understanding of what it looks like and, and how, it, how the things go. So I think uh, so far so good on that and I'm glad that got brought forward and we were able to discuss that. Uh, I'll try to get through this one. Uh, I had some other meetings scheduled that got um, uh, postponed because of uh, my career in law enforcement and um, it's been in the media and I'm not going to go into great detail what happened other than I think we have some very lucky uh, deputies with certainly some guardian angels on their shoulders. Um, I was there and I'll just uh, try not to mix careers here too much but um, I learned some things there um, about what we probably need to do to help improve um, communication on those incidents. And unfortunately, they're coming, becoming more and more. Um, and that improvement is gonna be expensive, um, anywhere from a half a million to three quarters of a million dollars. Um, and that will be up to the board to decide if they wanna move forward with it, but I just wanna make the board or put them on notice that I am gonna uh, help with the sheriff's office researching that that piece of equipment and it's more than one piece it's a you know full disclosure it's a it's a command post that's mobile that we can um, run operations out of anywhere and I think we learned or I know I learned that we are insufficient in that area and we need to improve that and I hope that the rest of the board will at least explore and listen to that um, debate as we move forward. So I didn't want that to come as a surprise to the board or to the public that that's what um, I'm looking at and uh, and gonna bring forward um, through the sheriff's office because it is their, um, their department. So with that, again, I'm just grateful that everyone is okay and, um, and I, uh, I look forward to working to improve our safety. And uh, also real brief, I'd like to thank and this will probably never reach them, but a lot of different agencies came to help during this incident. Uh, Wright County, the State Patrol, I shouldn't even start listing them because I'm gonna miss them, but they came to help and that's, it was necessary and, and we needed it and I'm so grateful they did. But with that, sometimes we get questions why we go help other places. Well, that's exactly why, because we, we help our neighbors and they came to help us, so thank you. I'd like to thank them for that. That's enough for today. Thank you. <clears throat> On the 23rd, uh, we met with uh, Renville County um, uh, Ditch staff on a planning meeting for judi judicial ditch number one. Uh, briefly after that, we went into a judicial ditch number four meeting where we saw a petition to abandon a section of tile and that petition was denied. Uh, we was on the 24th, we had our five-year um, highway plan. Uh, it was a good couple hour session on, on road projects coming and how funding works with that and some ideas that uh, we'll continue to work on. 27th, uh, our ARPA committee met on the uh, February 3rd. Um, as uh, Commissioner Nagel had mentioned, uh, we met with uh, some members of the Fair Board and County staff to talk about facilities and some future uh, projects to look at at the McLeod County Fairgrounds. Uh, yesterday, uh, Commissioner Kruger joined me uh, in meeting with the DNR, the Lake Marion Lake Association, Brown Run Gun Club, and Collins Township, as well as our Environmental Services Director and Administrator on some long-range plans for Lake Marion, uh, specifically dealing with the invasive species known as carp uh, and how we can uh, improve uh, the water conditions on Lake Marion, which will definitely dovetail into uh, supporting our park system uh, on, that, on that lake as well. That wraps up my time. All right, I, uh, well, uh, Commissioner, I had already uh, talked about the 23rd and, and uh, JD1 and, and JD4 hearings and uh, the results there. I, I don't think we've heard the last of JD4, but I, to where we are right now <laughs> is uh, 
is 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 good for or, or where we need to be as far as the county is concerned it's kind of uh, up in the air where we go from here but uh, on the 24th I had a final hearing or I went to Buffalo Creek watershed meeting there was a final hearing for a for a, an improvement uh, 12 and 13 on on JD8 um, that moved forward and was approved and, and moving to the next step um, I on the 25th we had uh, mr. Commissioner Wright said we had our CR, CRF for our ARPS committee meeting uh, on the 25th at mid Minnesota uh, meeting it was held in um, in cosmos uh, slippery night but we got her done and uh, Trailblazer on the 26th um, and also on the 26th uh, met with Ryan and our administrator and Connie uh, to discuss the Ricky Noonan contract. So that brings us, uh, let me just a second, I'm missing something here. Lake Marion was was already commented on. Uh, it's interesting, it's a, it's a lake that's totally in McLeod County and utilized by uh, by a lot of people, and uh, um, and when I say that, it's not a border lake, which which so I think we have a little bit more responsibility to that lake. Um, agenda review on Thursday, last Thursday the second, uh, and that brings us to today. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yes, I um, was busy the last couple of weeks, and I was not available in the county. I was overseas, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. County Attorney, anything to add? And not much for, for updates. Uh, been actively trying to reach out to our various departments and, and get around and uh, solicit information from them and what their needs are and, and what we can do to facilitate their work moving forward. And then I would just note on, on the 3rd this past Friday, uh, there was a sentencing in, in murder in the third degree case that had went to trial where the defendant was found guilty back in November um, and that individual was sentenced to 117 months in prison. Uh, Ms. Johnson from our office had handled that case and, and done a nice job. There were several several victims and, and um, family or excuse me victims relatives and family friends there present that provided impact statements so uh, you yeah, know it was uh, it's impactful hearing but nothing else. Thank you. Administrator. Thank you. I'll go ahead with the agenda. Item A, consider approval of recommendation from the Coronavirus Relief Fund Committee and Budget Committee to allocate up to $50,000 towards Lake Marion improvement projects. The up to $50,000 would be deducted from the $2.7 million allocation previously set for McLeod County Parks and Fairgrounds projects. Okay, I'll just add for discussion on this. Uh, this is a, a request that came um, from the ARPA committee, uh, but it had a lot to do with our meeting yesterday as uh, Commissioner Kruger and I met with uh, uh, the various partners that I already mentioned. Um, because, uh, uh, so I will be abstaining from voting on this because uh, as the, the, this deals with uh, uh, carp removal and I have volunteered to uh, take uh, the carp so that uh, we could get our dollars stretched further uh, for fertilizer production uh, on our farm. And uh, it's just a lot cleaner if I abstain from voting. Although it's, uh, it's, it's a ton of work, um, it, it could be seen that I have a, a personal gain from this. And so it's just a lot cleaner if I uh, approach this motion that way. So I'll ask for uh, Vice Chair Nagel to continue forward then. Mr. Chair, can I yep. just add a note real quick? So with that said, um, Commissioner Wright actually is only taking the carp that cannot be sold by the Correct. commercial fishermen. Yep. So some can, and he's taking what cannot. So it actually does save a significant cost in the project. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I don't know if I should wait for the new chair. <laughs> Go ahead. That one. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I, I alluded to it in my, in my calendar report. Um, uh, it's not a hard decision at all for me to, this, this, as far as the money going to, uh, out of ARPA fund to Lake Marion, I, I just, uh, I just want. Uh, there's other lakes in the county, and and I, I don't know. Right now, we're focused on Lake Marion, um, and I'm I'm sure there's going to be people asking, you know, we should do this for this lake and that for that lake, and we're going to have to prioritize them. 
Because if you could split the money up too much, you wouldn't get anything done on any lake. So <coughs> I, I just want to make that clear that we're going to do the best we can document where we where our excesses are failures hopefully none but or where we can set more efficiencies to move on to other lakes so i just I, that i just wanted to clear up and i personally i i wished uh, I, I i didn't even mind that uh, if uh, commissioner wright would have stayed on to abstain himself is is fine because this is truly an efficiency that we're lucky that somebody close by and that's involved will take him because this is it would be cost it would be it's cost effective that we actually know somebody that can, can take them. So, uh, and uh, Commissioner, I made it quite clear that if somebody else wanted some carp, they could bring their, <laughs> they could come and get some. I mean, it's 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 a byproduct of what we're doing. So, um, it's it's his wish to abstain, and, and it's more of a perception than, in my opinion, than anything else, because the fish really belong in the contract, belong to the fishermen. All right, very good. I think. Commissioner Kruger did a good job explaining that. And again, we have helped uh, other lakes, Bell Lake, Winstead, um, and I hope we can continue to do that depending on how the, ne the needs um, and the funds that are available. So with that, what are the wishes of the board on item A under county, county administration? I would make a motion to allocate, to go forward with the allocation of $50,000. Motion by Commissioner Kruger, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Luthens, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries with Nagel, Kruger, and Luthens voting aye, and Commissioner Wright abstaining. Mr. Chair? Thank you. Thank you. Item B, consider adopting resolution 23-CB-16, reestablishment of the temporary parks planning task force committee. It was established in June 2022. The resolution included an ending date of February 1, 2023. As you know, we're not completed, um, so we do need to extend that with your vote. Okay, wishes of the board? No to approve. Is there a second? second? We have a motion from Commissioner Nagel, a second from Kruger to consider adopting resolution 23 CB 16, reestablishment of the Temporary Parks Planning Task Force Committee. Any discussion? We'll then proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item C, consider adoption of resolution 23-CB17, additional commissioner committee appointments, and that's for the board to um, reappoint commissioners Paul Wright and Joe Nagel to the same committee indefinitely until the completion of the McLeod County Parks Plan. Okay, wishes of the board. I'll move to adopt the resolution. Okay, is there a second? Second. We have a motion from Kruger, second from Luthens to adopt resolution 23 CB 17. Any discussion? We'll then proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item D, consider adopting resolution 23-CB-18, additional staff committee appointments um, to add to the temporary parks planning task force committee. Staff members, myself, Sheila Murphy, Liz Danielson, Colton Drager, who are already on that, and then in the addition, Andrew Engel, indefinitely until the completion of the McLeod County Parks Plan. Move to approve. I'll second it. Motion by Nagel, second by Kruger to consider adopting resolution 23 CB 18, staff committee appointment. Any discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. I just, again, I I, I just want to clarify that all these resolutions are, are, are somewhat um, together. I mean, for transparency, it's yep. nice to move through them and see exactly what we're doing, but they're, they're all in the context of our plan. So I, that's just my comment. Yep. Any further discussion? Will I proceed to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item E, consider adoption of resolution 23-CB-19, additional citizen committee appointments um, with no changes to the temporary parks planning task force committee, including Brian Stiles, Corey Knight, Chad Chismowski, Lori Chuchka, and Jerry Eggert, indefinitely until the completion of the McLeod County Parks Plan. This resolution also appoints Lisa Huser to the Economic Development Committee for a three-year term. That is a new appointment to replace a previous member. 
I will also move to approve resolution 23 CB 19. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Kruger, second by Luthens to consider adopting 23 CB 19. Any discussion? We'll then proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item F, notification of board workshop following our board meeting on Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, here at the McLeod County Government Center, 520 Chandler Avenue North, Glencoe, Minnesota. Item G, at the time this agenda was published, there were no agenda items for the February 7th today, 2023 County Board Workshop. Tentative agenda items for the February 21st, 2023 County Board Workshop include dust control and County Roads 84 and 74 turn back agreement. So we will not have a workshop today. Item H, notification of McLeod Drainage Authority informal meeting on tree removal, historic review reports, repair reports, and estimated cost of engineering for County Ditch 8, County Ditch 10, County Ditch 36, outletting ditches 37, and McLeod Wright Joint Ditch 35. The Drainage Authority will hear public comment regarding repairs at 3 o'clock p.m. Thursday, February 16, 2023, here in the Martin McLeod Boardroom, McLeod County Government Center, 520 Chandler Avenue North, Glencoe, Minnesota. Item I, notification of environmental services workshop at 11 o'clock a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Wednesday, February 22, 2023 at the Environmental Services Building at 1065 Fifth Avenue Southeast, Hutchinson, Minnesota. Thank you. Okay, seeing as we're now at the end of our agenda for today, is there anything for open forum or press relations? Seeing none, we'll entertain a motion to recess. So moved. That. Motion by Nagel, uh, second by Luthens. To recess and our next county board meeting will be at 9 a.m. Tuesday, February 22nd, 2023 at the McLeod County Government <coughs> Center. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Before I forget, do you know uh, <coughs> 